because I actually was inquisitive and wanted to actually see if what they're saying about problem solving, like uh, problem solving skills, which actually helped because I can see that from now after uh, writing, learning how to write to code, I can, I wouldn't say I'm a fast thinker, but then I love how I can, I can, I can solve problems. I'm, I can think about it. I can um, break them down. I come up with solutions based on what I can prioritize. You know, I've also incorporated the same thought line or problem solving skills with uh, a program that I did with McKinsey. Hey, but yourself, you 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 are you are in check with these things. Do you do you read a lot, or do you I, constantly analyze and be like, what is going on? Because like, <laughs> hey. I read. I do. I love analyzing. I love analyzing. I think that's why I, when I was doing the fourth industrial, I wanted to add a module for data science. Um, I love understanding data, and yeah, I just it's my yeah my passion because it kind of makes you understand what's going on you become in tune you understand how things yeah. work trends why this is doing why is that why is it so why is this blue you know you understanding a lot of things so that's me i love reading i love understanding and i love to actually analyze so i think that's why i do i actually do a lot of those short courses so that i can keep my mind healthy in a sense and you also code yeah you don't know i did i did it for one year i was so happy when i so the program is uh we first started we first started with um uh, learning about machine learning we did the durological part of it yeah. and then every every week we used to code and then at the end, we used, we had to write a paper based on the program that we had um, we had in, uh, started. So so we had a program where you have um, machine you add you you using machine learning, and then you actually for our load shedding and our electricity pro, pro, pro problems, basically what is going on in South Africa, we saw a need to actually design a program that is going to send out updates on um, your, you say, your, your, your usage, how much electricity usage, how much you're going to be saving if you oh. do this, how you can um, save your electricity and do that, mm. and then um, load shading schedule on how many days you're going to be having load shading and how you can plan ahead. And then we incorporated that into one, um, one, one software. And, when it worked, it was like a small child saying, yay! <laughs> it is beautiful. <laughs> you know, the, 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 there, is just, there is just something about writing a code yeah. and seeing it work. Yo, like it's that like, feeling. Yo, and then, yeah. you know, when you made a mistake, instead of writing a, 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 a square bracket, you're writing the curly one and then, you, yeah. it's just one small mistake and then you figure that out you're like oh gosh I'm so good in problem solving I'm gonna excel in problem you you just have that you know that confidence it's beautiful I really think coding should sure. be one of the um one of the subjects in our metrics everyone just so that they can it opens up their minds into problem solving it's a beautiful language it's beautiful it's a beautiful course it's beautiful. It is, it is, it is, it is. So, so what do you code in? Which languages are you more we familiar did, with? I did um, um, CSS. Baby ones were H, HTML. Uh, we did, I did CSS. I did um, JavaScript. I did Java app line. I did, um, yeah. JavaScript and mostly it was JavaScript. I, I learned a lot of JavaScript and AppLine. I don't know if you know AppLine. No, it's, it's the first time I hear about it. Java AppLine. Um, uh, so it's like a shorter form of JavaScript. It helps with uh, frameworks and all of those. It's, yeah, it's a bit. I would say smarter. It's very smart. 
I, I, I really enjoyed it. And then we did a lot of um, SQL, SQL, um, SQL oh, the databases. See. Oh, that 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 is that is challenging. Databases and all that. So yeah. You know someone. You know someone on WhatsApp. Actually, let me just open my WhatsApp right now. Um, asked a question along those lines. I think the question was. How is she integrating um, AI and coding into the work that um, she's doing? Let me just get the WhatsApp right now. Um, okay. So the question was, um, how does she solve problems in the health environment using tech? I see she did both for IR and cybersecurity. It shows that she's interested in tech or might be using tech in health. Mm -hmm. So as I stated, when we started, I would really, really love to come up with a program or come up with um, uh, yes, a program per se, which is going to kind of make it easier for the health space, especially with the um, uh, softwares that we use. Like I would say, let's say i know we have six or seven systems imagine working with six or seven systems so have having in my in my industry having having one platform where you can get everything and then do everything in one space that is one of the things that i would want to achieve for my for my career and then what i've noticed with um with what i've uh, learned or what i've studied is that people when they get uh, challenged in terms of how a systems work or how I'm able to help them, I'm able to come and say, no, I mean, you're doing this, 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 and then I come up with the solution. So I'm able to help them in that sense, which kind of makes me, you know, yeah, it helps a lot because I'm able to solve a lot of um, uh, technology, uh, tech, uh, tech, question, uh, tech problems, especially with systems. So it kind of helps my team and people that I work with because we faster, we don't get stuck in one thing. So if a site calls, hi, Marping, I'm having a problem. Oh, let me pull it for you. Let me show you how it helps, uh, you know, how it works. And then I'm able to actually explain it much better because I understand, I understand how it was done. I can go to inspect and see how it was done, how it was actually formulated. So it gives me that broad understanding of everything. But what I would love to actually achieve is connect the two. Because I know with a lot of companies, I know Sunafi, I know Astra, I know a lot of companies, they have a specific division for fourth industrial revolution, um, which they're actually using AI and then they saying that a lot of companies i saw even mckinsey they even have a paper on ai and drug development so in a way i think it's kind of it's going to help the society by developing more drugs faster and then making sure that they're effective and then you know when something is done through ai you know in in terms of um what is this data information it's easy for you to study trends to analyze a lot of things so getting information faster and all that it makes you easy uh, it makes you it enables you to actually make more decisions which are actually going to affect your how you 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 actually use the specific medication how you actually your your how how safe it is how you those kind of information that which are needed in drug which are needed in drug uh, drug drug development so ae and and healthcare it's actually a thing now i've been reading a lot of papers mckenzie for one i've seen one i've seen a lot of papers from other pharma companies that actually want to incorporate ai and some of them some of them are using ai as well as um to incorporate it into drug uh, development so it's a thing so how i would want it's to amazing do... of it's amazing <laughs> sorry sorry I, I didn't want to interject yeah. No, no, sorry, you can go. I, I, how I would want to do it is we would want to find a way which, you know, 
write a paper or as well investigate further so that I can actually give in information how we can actually also uh, solve problems that we have in the health space, especially South Africa. You know, I was saying that is quite interesting of how AI is going to revolutionize, revolutionize. It's just whole, you see. It's you know, <laughs> you know it, yeah, it's, it's quite interesting of how AI is going to revolutionize the different industries mm. and sectors because I was also reading a paper on AI on education. I don't know if you know about. There is a new chatbot right now. It's called Chat G G GPT, I think. Um, and the students who knew about it last year actually used it to to actually do their assignments because it's a chatbot. You can you can ask it to write an essay for you. Oh. Um, it will actually you Look know at do that. that. You know. Look you must check that. it out. It's it's I it's, need to. it's 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 Look it's, at it's, that. it's the most amazing thing. And it. it and it can also code. You can wow. also ask it to write a code. Wow. And it will, will actually code, write a code for you, you and stuff like that. So, that is good. Sometimes you get stuck on a code yeah. for hours, for days. You cry, you come writing, and you, you know, I need that. You would ask Google, oh, Google doesn't understand you. You, it's, yeah, I need that. So, is it nah. jet of GT? No, that. It's, it's called Chat GPT. GPT, okay. Oh. Yeah. I'll look into um, it. I asked it to, I was like, who's Ben Mahudu? Hey, and it was correct in most of the things it said about me. Oh. Like, it, 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 it's, it's more like you're chatting to someone. You know, like it, it, it in real time, it, it actually writes stuff and be like, Ben Mahoudi is this, 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 he did this and this. And I'm like, That's hey, smart. this sounds like me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so, so it's, 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 it's going to, yeah, it's, 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 I, I think that one is one thing that even this year, it will, it will shake the education industry. Like, yeah. it will shake it. Yeah. It will definitely shake it. You know, and the thing that we're seeing that if you're not ahead and if you're not in tune with these things, then you're gonna, you're gonna be left behind. behind. You know? you're gonna so be I was, I've been reading. Uh, uh, mm. So I've been reading a lot about it this recently. Yeah. So the other question that came on WhatsApp: uh, How does it make her work easier if she's using those tech skills? But I think you've already answered that. Yes, yes, yes. It. Um, I'm always uh, to step, uh, to step ahead. Last time I was able to find information that the patient was not legible for it an oncology study because I was playing around on a specific system and I was able to download a report which actually stated that the patient was not eligible. So by the time those results were there, I was like, oh, I already know. I already know. So it kind of <laughs> helps me. <laughs> I already know. I was like, I already know. Yeah. So it kind of makes me uh, a bit ahead in the sense that um. It, yeah, I think I think people should actually invest in studying those things, especially if you want to be, um, you want to avoid being redundant because when those kind of skills, you actually, you young, you vibrant, you understanding systems. I mean, I can be a systems expert. I can actually, uh, I actually mm. be a systems expert in one of her, one of the systems, you know, because I'm so understanding. I know what's going on. I actually understand it. So I think, yeah, that's how I use it in my industry or my career. And Thomas Molef on YouTube said, I must ask you this. Uh, the question was, what postgraduate in AI does she hold? And what drew her into AI? Um, so the one that I hold was the one that I did at UG for the whole year. Um, it's uh, for the industrial qualification, for the IR in, in artificial intelligence. I acquired it at UG for a year. 
And then the reason why I wanted to, what drew me into um, AI was my, I would say, I, I am so grateful for my inquisitiveness. Um, being inquisitive makes you want to question mm -hmm. and understand a lot of things. So at some point I wanted to trigger or kind of attach, people always said when you code, your problem, problem solving skills will improve. So I was like, okay, let's see if this is true. So I wanted to actually see if I can actually write the code, if I can actually learn or apply myself in writing code, because I really thought it was difficult, to be honest. I really, really, for the life of me, at some point I was like, nah, man, this is this is for other people. This is, pe some people are gifted with this. This is not for us, you know, until I actually applied myself and actually tried. And then I saw, I saw actually, with, okay, this is doable. If I just add extra time, add extra effort, and then, you know, practice and not give up on myself, that's when I saw, it's okay, I can actually write a code. I can actually do a simple thing and actually do a web, web page, you know. So, yeah, that's when I, I actually um, saw. That's what actually drew me into it because I actually was inquisitive and wanted to actually see if what they're saying about problem solving, like uh, problem solving skills, which actually helped because I can see that from now after uh, writing, learning how to write a code, I can, I wouldn't say I'm a fast thinker, but then I love how I can, I can, I can solve problems. Um, mm. I can think about it. I can um, break them down. I come up with solutions based on what I can prioritize. You know, I've also incorporated the same thought line or problem solving skills with uh, a program that I did with McKinsey, which based on what I've already know, it actually um, approved that, yeah, problem solving is how you should do it like this and how you should pr breaking down problems and then seeing mm. that, you know, and coming up with solution based on priorities and what works and all of that. So basically, I would say uh, it was my inquisitiveness that actually drew me into AI. And I love things. I love things. <laughs> that... you, you love things? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it's good to I like love, things. I think, love things. you Learning. know, people... Yeah, I mean, people who, because usually when I read a lot about um, the biographies, I like reading about biographies of like your Mark Zuckerbergs, you know, and stuff like that. Mm. And you realize, well, no, this guy says they just like things, mm. really. They just they, 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 like they want to be trends. Mm. Yeah, mm. and being inquisitive as well, mm. you know, because otherwise you, you wouldn't think of those things that they think about. Okay, so the other question that came through was, what are the requirements to do artificial intelligence? Um, most university um, they would uh, want. So the, the the oh, so I was saying that the the, the, the question continues. Um, it says, does one have to have a tech degree to do it, or can graduates from other fields venture into it? I think um, that's with the, the one that UJ offers, me, um, I'm a science uh, person you need to be a science uh you need to have a degree in science economics or what's this engineering and then have um an fq i don't know if you can still hear me my earphone just i don't know where my earphones are sorry about that mm -hmm. i don't know where my headphones yeah, are so i'm you. using my earphones rather so yeah, you would need to have an NQF of uh, level seven, and then um, I will send Ben the information. I will send Ben the information, and then I have that, and then I think um, final mark of 60, 65 so that you can be part of that program, and then you do it for a year. Uh, you do it for oh, yeah. It's also sponsored. It's also sponsors. It's also sponsored by Anetcha. So yeah, if you play around on, on the UJ, um, UJ, 
UJ page, you would see certain information. There's a lot of uh, programs on UJ that offers uh, Fourth IR, and then I think there was also a master's that they were also trying out in a short course that they wanted to try out based on healthcare and all that about Fourth IR. So they very, very um, so much into Fourth IR. I also know University of Stellenbosch for SES programming. Um, this one is very, um, you, you, it's a very good one when you want to branch into my industry. And also, if you have, I know I can also do uh, public health. I, I don't, I don't enjoy public health. So uh, I would emphasize, I would, uh, I encourage people to also do a public health degree, uh, post grad or uh, masters, and then they can actually choose. Um, epidemiology or uh, what you call stats. So from there you can, I know when you have a master's you can now choose a lot of master's degrees that you want to actually um, actually learn. So yeah, you can play around and read around. I actually need to have an, epi an, an epidemiologist on the channel because a lot of my subscribers have been asking me to have an epidemiologist mm, and okay. I even want to Google that and I'm like, oh, okay, you know. I'll find um, you one in and my... the last question was... I'll find you one in my industry. They also did epidemiology oh. as well as, um, um, what is this, Biostat. So they can actually explain how, what they do exactly in that clinical research because i think we yeah. need to have a lot of people in clinical research telling people what clinical research is how to branch into it how to get into it so that people in the um, bsc uh, are not actually you know, they're going through the most because a lot of them are just ish yeah. they're not away mm. and you know you actually you actually came at the right time because um, in the beginning of this year, I, I put a poll on my WhatsApp, I mean, on my YouTube channel to say, what careers do you like us to cover this year? And some people said, like, now I'm remembering it because now we're talking about it. But I remember someone saying clinical medical research, and uh, I was mm. like, oh, okay. So actually, you you came at the right time, you know. You know? Um, <laughs> thanks for that. <laughs> plus, no, say what you're saying now. Can you hear me? I'm saying plus. I can hear you. Oh, okay. I'm saying plus with uh, clinical research, it's not known. I mean, with one of my colleagues last year, the one that I actually wanted her to be part of this, we actually felt sure. last year we did a stream for one hour where we had a lot of our colleagues um some in data management some in biostats some in so that they can just give people a clear background of what we do how they can break into that and all that so if you are yeah, I can actually share those. I shared one of the concepts. I can share more concepts, especially those who are in data management and all that, so that we can have continuous, we can keep educating people about this. I think um, yeah. it's time people like us got into the industry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Why does it seem like you have, you, which have over there already? Uh, uh, I because because I, 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 no, no, no. I, I, I work with students, right? And I see this firsthand, you know, like the, the issues and you start to realize that actually there needs to be a lot of mentorship from especially people like us, like black people, people who come from rural areas and townships and stuff like that. Because, yeah, you see that university space that actually, yeah, we, we need a lot of that. So, and that's what we're doing uh, on this platform. The last question says, can AI develop drugs? I believe so. I believe so. I believe it's one of the, one of, um, one of, it, it is, it is. I believe so because I've, from the, from the research that I've been reading, from what I've been reading, um, drug development is actually part, it's actually used to do, uh, to, for drug, de um, AI is actually used for drug development. I've seen it, I've heard about it, I've read about it, and in, in any, you know, AI 
impacts a lot of industry and then drug development is one of it. So yeah, I most definitely think so. You know, I was I was reading on the the metaverse. You know, there is this term that is used now. They call it the metaverse. I think even Mark Zuckerberg changed the whole Twitter name of Facebook and as a group company to Meta. Mm, mm, I saw that. Yeah, and and it it and and it seems to be like a very it's going to be a very um, fascinating virtual world whereby um, a doctor can assess a patient, but not in the same space. Like I'm here, you are there, mm. but I can still assess you. And I was like, hey, yes. yeah, qua 2050. Mm. And then we can actually now, the, let's say you, let's say I'm working at a specific company, and then I'm actually working in the pharma, uh, pharma the dynamics uh, um, section where we actually combining the specific. Um, hormones specific um i don't know hormones and all that that are actually used in biochemistry like your let's say for cancer one of the cancer uh, studies that i work with they found they i can't actually say this <laughs> i can't sorry i can't actually say anything about the studies yeah. that i work with so yeah they we work with a lot of um let's say gene mutations yes you can take the gene mutation, the DNA, use like that transparent, um, transparent screen, mix it together, find ways on how, where it binds, how it binds, how it actually locks in the protein, how it actually going to, how it's going to move, how it's going to uh, change and all that, how it's going to mutate. And then you can use that based on the AI and all that because you, you, you know you know what to expect. So I think AI is going to be a very important, a very important, um, what I say course, or a very important, what, Ben? A very important thing or skill to have in the near future, yeah. I would say. Yeah, definitely. Say. Most, most definitely. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be interesting, you know, I think the next coming, let's say, 50 years from now, it's going to be very interesting. It's I going think. to be. When you look at we're the gonna, developments and what people are doing. We're going to have classes that are AI, um, AI products, you know, anything that you, it's going to tell you when the traffic, like a watch, you know, a, a class like a watch that is actually like a watch telling you your time, traffic, load shading with us. You know, it's, yeah, we just, we're going to... I mean, somehow, a... somehow companies like Apple are reading to that because I see the smart watches. It can tell you a heart rate. It can tell you, like, you know, the, the distance you've covered. Mm. You, you can get a call through it. And I'm like, yeah, mm. yeah, it's, 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 things are going, things yeah. are going, things are going. Look, um... Marupin, thank you so much for this. Um, these conversations, man, I, I can do them like all day, every day, you know, because these are conversations that we need to have. And also, I also learn a lot from these things, trust me. Um, and, you know, and also the audience, I think they will actually pick a lot from this. So thank you so much for your time. And the you know, and the Kokot. Yeah, I believe in one of my favorite saying it's uh, we raise by uh, lifting each other. So I really resonate with that saying. I, I love it. Uh, if any way I can help a person to, yeah, to, 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 to squeeze, to be, to be part of the industry, it would mean a lot. So, yeah. But I give any merit, I need people to understand that I wish I could. I will help you in any way possible. 
Yeah, I mean, information is enough, connections are enough. Mm. Um, and yeah, I mean, you're a hiker, you know, living through lifting others is something that you do almost now and then. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs>